All right, we're diving into a massive list of AI web tools you sent over. I've heard a thousand of them. Over a thousand. It's incredible, and new ones are appearing constantly. It's an AI explosion, seriously. I mean, what does that even tell us about where AI is going? Well, the speed is mind blowing, right? That's for sure. I'm seeing AI for like writing movie scripts, yeah. composing music Beach tools it. that can analyze climate data, yeah. even help firefighters. Mm -hmm. It's like AI is suddenly everywhere. It really is. It feels like every corner of our lives is being touched by it now. It's a lot, honestly. It is. Like drinking from a fire hose, you know. But what's interesting is that the creators of this list seem to want to make these tools available to everyone. Yeah. A lot of them are free to try. Okay. And even open source. Like, yeah. Wait, so anyone can, like, tinker with the code? Yeah, anyone can build upon it, yeah. improve it. That's pretty radical. It is. They've even open sourced their college degree GPT prompt. You mean, like... A college education, but free and for everyone. That's the idea. That's wild. It makes you wonder about the future of like traditional degrees. Big questions for sure. What happens if everyone can just DIY their education? Yeah, will new types of gatekeeping emerge? Hmm. You know, or are we really moving towards truly democratized knowledge? It's fascinating to think about. I mean, the, the creators of this list say that people using these tools are in the first. 5%, uh -huh. the early adopters, right. shaping the future. Exactly. Makes you feel pretty special, huh? It is an exciting time. But let's get into some specific tools okay. to see how AI is having a real impact on the world, not just, you know, hype. Yes, please. Yeah. I mean, with a thousand tools to pick from, where do we even begin? Well, one that stands out is Social Safety Net GPT. What's that one do? Streamlining and personalizing how we help people in need. So AI would, like connect people to the right resources exactly imagine ai cutting through all that bureaucracy and paperwork wow helping people navigate a complex system that does sound promising it could be really helpful but what about the human element you know wouldn't ai make helping people less personal that's a good question yeah the idea isn't to get rid of human interaction right but to use ai to make the system work better okay think about it ai could analyze a person's situation and suggest the best services for them. Hmm. It could even help predict problems before they get too big. Oh, that's interesting, like being proactive instead of reactive. Yeah, exactly. That would be a big shift. But couldn't AI also bake in existing biases, you know, like making things less fair instead of more fair? That's always a risk with any algorithm. Yeah. The key is to make sure that the people developing these systems prioritize transparency and accountability. So we can see how the algorithms are making their decisions. And that they're doing it fairly. Okay, I'm with you there. What else caught your eye on this list? Well, there's Sustainable Futures GPT. Okay. This one uses AI to look at tons of climate data. Oh, wow. Okay. To help us make smarter decisions about the planet. So instead of relying on politics or gut feelings, we let AI crunch the numbers. Yeah. And give us more objective insights. I like it. Yeah. But is it realistic? What do you mean? Can AI really help us solve a problem as complicated as climate change? It's not going to be the only solution, right? But it can give us powerful new tools, okay, for understanding the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, identifying trends, yeah. exploring solutions. Okay, AI can help us make more informed choices, even if it can't fix everything on its own. Makes sense. So it's like a powerful assistant, not a magic bullet. Exactly. I'm seeing some AI tools that are really specific, like Cannabis GPT mm -hmm. and even Firefighters GPT. Yes. Now that one I got to hear more about. That's right. We're seeing an increase in specialized AI for all sorts of fields. What would Firefighters GPT even do? Would AI be putting out fires? Well, not quite. Okay. But imagine if AI could help manage those wildfires. Oh. By analyzing data and predicting fire behavior, you know, mm -hmm. helping firefighters make better decisions. Right. Under pressure, yeah. Exactly. High stakes situations. Wouldn't that be risky, though? Like, what if the AI messes up in the middle of a huge fire? That's a valid concern. It's important to remember that AI should help humans, not replace them. Right. We need to strike a balance. Between human expertise. And technological assistance. Okay. It's about using AI to enhance our abilities not completely rely on it. These specialized tools are fascinating. They are. But where does it end? How niche can these AI applications actually get? Well, that's a great question. As AI gets even more advanced and easier to use, yeah. we're probably going to see even more specialized tools. Wow. 
for all kinds of interests and needs. It seems limitless. The only limit is our imagination, really. Okay, you've blown my mind officially. I'm starting to grasp the potential here. It's exciting stuff. But this is just the beginning, right? Oh yeah, we've only just scratched the surface. There's so much more to explore. Absolutely. Okay, so before we went on this whole firefighters GPT thing, right. you were saying something about AI getting like super specialized, okay. like more than just firefighters GPT. On professions, even that. cannabis GPT is a good example, you know, yeah. tailored to a whole community, not just a job. So there's like an AI for every hobby, every interest you can think of. Pretty much. It's amazing. I mean, where does it stop? It's mind blowing, right? Yeah. This list has everything from like a pharmaceutical assistant GPT wow. to a home renovator GPT, huh? even a solar land assessor GPT. Seriously. If there's a niche, there's an AI for it. That's wild. But what's it all mean? Like, what does all this specialization tell us about AI? I think it shows how AI is becoming more than just this futuristic idea. Yeah. It's actually becoming part of our everyday lives. Right. Solving specific problems that people have. So it's getting practical. Exactly. It's becoming more applicable. So it's not just like Google and big companies using it anymore. No, it's trickling down to everyone. And becoming a tool we all use. Exactly. Remember LM Studio? Yeah, the one that lets you run AI on your own computer. Right, without even needing internet access. Yeah. That makes AI accessible to so many more people. So you don't have to be a coder to use it. Not at all. That's pretty amazing. It opens up a lot of possibilities. It creates this like feedback loop. You know, how so? more people using AI leads to more innovation, which leads to even better AI. Oh, I see. It's an exciting time. OK, I'm with you so far. But remember all those disclaimers we talked about, mm -hmm. about using these tools responsibly? Right. We can't just ignore those. Yeah. A lot of these AI tools, especially for health or legal stuff. Yeah. They say they're just for informational purposes. OK. Not a replacement for actual professional advice. I guess it's tempting to see AI as a solution to everything. It is. But people need to be careful about taking it too literally. Right. Right. That's why education is so important. So people understand how to use AI responsibly. Exactly. It's not just about the technical stuff. Yeah. But also helping people think critically. To be more discerning users of AI. Precisely. You need yeah. to be able to tell what's credible, mm -hmm. what's not. And when to double check what the AI is telling you. Exactly. It's like with the internet in the early days. Right? Oh, yeah. We all had to learn to filter out the junk. Exactly. And with AI becoming so common, we need to develop that kind of AI literacy. I like that AI literacy. Huh. We need to be fluent in AI. Right, to navigate this new world. It feels like how we learn and work and even create is all changing. It is. And speaking of creating, let's talk about AI and creativity. Oh, yeah. Because this list is full of tools that are like pushing the boundaries of art. It's incredible to see. We already talked about Suno AI and how it can write music. Mm -hmm. But there's even more tools here for making short films and music videos and all sorts of things. All kinds of things. It makes you think about the future of art, doesn't it? It does. Ah. Will we all be filmmakers now that AI can handle the technical parts? That's a good question. I don't think AI will replace human creativity. Okay. But it'll give us new ways to express ourselves. So like a new medium for artists to work with. Exactly. Like a digital paintbrush or... A virtual instrument. A way to enhance our creativity. Not replace it. Right. But what about, like, the authenticity of art? If anyone can create a song with AI, mm -hmm. does that devalue human creativity? That's a great point. Yeah. Art is about more than just technical skill, though, right? Okay. It's about expressing emotions and telling stories. Connecting with people. Exactly. And AI can't replicate that. So AI might be able to make art that's technically good, yeah. But it's still up to humans to give it meaning. Exactly. We still need that human vision and intuition. And emotion. To connect with other people. To make art that really matters. That's the heart of it. Who knows? Maybe AI will help us create totally new art forms. It's possible. That we can't even imagine yet. It's pretty amazing to think about. It is. But like with anything powerful, mm. we need to be thoughtful about how we use AI. Absolutely. To make sure it's used in a way that benefits everyone. Exactly. And that's a conversation we all need to be part of. Okay, so we've talked about AI getting more specialized, the importance of using it responsibly, mm -hmm. and the amazing things it could do for creativity. Yeah. What else is out there? What other trends should we be watching? Well, one of the biggest is that AI models are getting even more powerful. Oh, wow. The ones in this list, like OpenAI's Sora. Okay. Quaishire Technologies' Kling AI, mm -hmm. Google's Gemini, 
Anthropics Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Okay, hold on. Can we break that down a bit? Sure. What can these models actually do? Well, they can generate realistic videos from just text. Wow. They can have conversations that are really nuanced and complex. Okay. They can analyze huge amounts of data and find patterns. That's pretty incredible, but also kind of scary. What do you mean? I mean, if they're that powerful, how do we control them? That's a valid question. Yeah. And what about bias? Could they be used to discriminate against people? Those are important concerns. And that's why things like transparency and ethical development are so crucial. Right, right. Especially as these models get more and more advanced. So it's not just about building the technology. Oh, right. It's about making sure it's used ethically. Exactly. We need safeguards, you know. To make sure it's used for good. Exactly. Okay, I'm starting to get the bigger picture here. It's not just about individual AI tools anymore, is it? Yeah. It's about how these tools are all connected, how they're evolving, mm -hmm. how they're changing the world. Exactly. And that leads to another really important topic. Closed versus open source AI. Okay, hold on. I'm not sure I follow. It's about who has access to the code, you know. To the code that makes the AI work. Exactly. Okay. Closed models like Sora and Gemini, mm -hmm. those are controlled by the companies that made them. Right. They decide who uses it and how. Like a walled garden. Kind of, yeah. Okay. That way they can focus on making it safe and ethical right. and prevent misuse. Makes sense. Open source models, on the other hand, yeah. like Llama 3.1 and Grok, yeah. those are open to anyone. Anyone can access the code. Anyone can modify it, build upon it, share it. So it's like a collaborative effort. Exactly. Like the Wikipedia of AI. I like that. That sounds amazing, but aren't there risks? There are. If anyone can change the code, how do we prevent bad uses? Like what? People creating harmful content, spreading misinformation, okay. yeah. even building autonomous weapons. That's scary. It is a concern. So it's a trade-off. It is. We need to balance the benefits of open collaboration mm -hmm. with the risks of misuse. Finding that sweet spot is tough. It is. We need guidelines and frameworks, you know. Yeah to promote responsible development and use. It seems like this whole AI thing is one giant balancing act. It really is. <laughs> trying to harness this power. And minimize the downside. And it's constantly changing. AI is evolving so fast. So where do we go from here? What's the next chapter? That's a great question. And one we'll explore in the final part of our deep dive. OK, I'm ready. Wow, I think my head's still spinning from all that. Well, all right. Open source AI, those super powerful models, it's a lot. It is. Maybe we should take a breath. Yeah, good idea. And like recap what we've learned. Yeah, let's do that. We started with this huge list of AI tools. Over a thousand of them. Over a thousand and more every day. It's crazy how fast it's growing. I remember feeling kind of overwhelmed at first. I get it. It's a lot to process. Like a tidal wave of information. Definitely. But it's also exciting, you know? Oh, absolutely. All these tools are making AI accessible to more people. That's the key takeaway. It's not just for the tech giants anymore. Exactly. Remember that quote about being in the first 5%? Yeah, the early adopters. It makes you feel like you're part of something big. It really does. Like we're pioneers exploring this new world. That's a great way to put it. And we saw AI be used for so many things. Yeah, from social good to climate change to art. It's mind-blowing. It really is. AI is becoming part of our lives in a big way. It's changing everything. But we also talked about responsibility, right? Definitely. And ethics. Mm -hmm. That's crucial. The more powerful AI gets, the more important those things become. Absolutely. We can't just focus on the technology itself. We have to think about how it's used. And make sure it's used for good. I'm starting to realize that this is on all of us. What do you mean? It's not just up to the people building AI to make it ethical. Right. It's on all of us to use it wisely. I agree. We all have a role to play. Which brings us back to that question from before. Oh yeah, the big one. How will you use these tools to shape the future? It's a powerful question. It is, and I don't know if I have the answer yet. That's okay, it's a journey. But at least now I have a better understanding of what's out there. Of the possibilities and the challenges. Exactly. Awareness is the first step. So keep asking questions. Stay curious. Think critically. About how AI is impacting your life and the world. This whole deep dive has been amazing. I'm glad. It's like we've just peeked behind the curtain. And it's made you want to learn more. Absolutely. That's what we want. AI is constantly evolving. There will always be new things to discover. New challenges. New possibilities. Well, 
I think it's time to wrap things up. Okay. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the world of AI web tools. It's been a pleasure exploring this with you. And remember, the future of AI is up to all of us. Let's shape it together. Bert, we'll see you next time. Bye.